Greetings, Risk Five friends. Wow, I can hardly see anything in this. Um, so this is a schematic and uh, it is the generic uh, register multiplexer. I've kind of been calling it a uh, crossbar uh, because it uh, takes a whole bunch of inputs and outputs a whole bunch of things. Some of them are registered and some of them are buffered. Um, so this is just a uh, hierarchical uh, schematic, which is uh, quite nice. So we can see, uh, actually I can't see. Well, that's enough of that. So um, basically the idea is that we've got these uh, connectors uh, down here. Uh, and these are these uh, connectors that I showed last time. Um, and uh, with grounds in between them, uh, I can get 106 signals out of each one, um, which translates into three 32-bit buses uh, plus some power and a bunch of other uh, control signals. So um, I basically break it up into buses in this block. Um, and each connector also has this four bit uh, selector that I can use for things. Um, and in addition, it has uh, these two other signals, some clock, uh, so it could be phase one or phase two or whatever, um, and a reset signal. That's a global reset signal. Um, and then uh, let's see, so we can see uh, some of the select signals. Uh, like, for example, this one down here goes to a bunch of uh, 3 to 8 decoders. So basically, this makes a 4 to 16 decoder. Yes, I'm aware that there is a 74154 4 to 16 decoder, but they don't make them in LVC or anything other than, you know, plain old 5 volt logic. So I just use two of these. Um, and that goes to the uh, selectors. Um, so uh, I think I have um, 16 of them. So I've fully loaded uh, all of the uh, signals that I can select. And if we look at this big uh, block over here, well, first, uh, this big block is just a multiplexer, right? And you can see that these are the selection signals over here, and these are the signals that are being selected up here. So for example, we have uh, the PC right over here. And in order to output the PC uh, to the output, uh, we would enable uh, the output enable for PC and so on. So this basically selects uh, one of these signals. Um, whoops. And if you don't select any of them, then you get all zeros out on here, which is useful for doing things like resets. Um, and then we've got uh, registers over here on the output. So we've got one, two, three, four, um, five registers for the uh, five registers that exist on the sequencer. Um, and we've also got three buffers for outputting data to the X, Y, and Z buses. Um, and there's an additional bus select because, well, sometimes you don't want to output to a bus. Um, so that's what I'm using the selection signals on this connector for. Uh, the selection signals on this connector uh, will select different values for shift amounts. Um, and there, I can select any one of 16 different shift amounts, uh, depending on what I need. Um, in practice, I don't need that many. Uh, but now if we take a look at the multiplexer itself, um, it looks a little um, busy, but basically it's just this block repeated over and over. Um, so we can see that we get an input and inside here, these are just buffers. Uh, this is a 32-bit buffer. So if we go back up one step, you can see that this is a 32-bit buffer. So is this, so is this, so is this, and so on. And all of their outputs are tied uh, to a single 32-bit bus. Um, the mem address, the mem address uh, buffer is a little bit different because sometimes we want to output the memory address and sometimes we want to output the memory address with the least significant bit zeroed. Um, and this is only in one instruction that this is used. So I have this an additional drop signal. Uh, so it looks like, uh, <clears throat> it looks like 
uh, two different inputs that you can select. Uh, it's really just the one input and then whether you drop the least significant bit. It's kind of the same thing with uh, MTVEC. So sometimes you want MTVEC and sometimes you want MTVEC uh, shifted right by two, because remember in the MTVEC register, the bottom two bits are the mode and then all of the other bits are uh, the actual uh, address. So you wanna shift that over. Um, so we have instruction, memdata read and so on and so forth. Again, here's another case um, where we have uh, the Z bus that we may wanna select or we may want to select Z shifted over by two. Um, and then we've got a bunch of pull downs, which is what pulls the output down to uh, all zeros. Now, this is the uh, shift amount selection. Um, so you can see that we've got a regular buffer of 32 bits, but where does it get the shift amount from? Well, it's gonna get it from this gal that I'm gonna use, right? Because it's really just, you know, one of 16 values. Um, you know, this sort of thing is perfect for that. Um, I can't really use a ROM because A, ROMs are quite slow and B, they don't make ROMs that small. Uh, and this is essentially a ROM I, if I don't use any of the registers uh, on, the, on the GAL. So, um, and in addition, because the shift amount is really, it's, it's limited to, uh, just five bits, right? Because that would be any shift amount between zero and 31. And there's no point in having any shift amount uh, with more than five bits. Um, I connected 10 bits up just because they were there. So, um, so that's that. Um, so that's the schematic. And again, the idea is that uh, this is a generic board. So if this is a board for, for example, mem address, then I don't populate these other registers or these buffers on the output. I don't need to. Um, and also I may not even need to populate some of these buffers inside this multiplexer uh, because those signals never go to the memory address. So, um, so that's uh, pretty much a, a, a nice advantage. Um, the, the other advantage of uh, creating a generic board is that I only need one printed circuit board. Um, there will be eight of these, again, I've been calling them crossbars. There will be eight of these crossbars in the sequencer. Uh, so if I had to make a printed circuit board for, for all the different ones, that would be eight different uh, circuit boards and I'd have to pay eight times. And each printed circuit board requires a setup fee Plus, because this is a card edge connector, I'm going to want to coat the, um, uh, the fingers with gold so that you can insert them uh, and remove them, you know, more than just a few times before the, uh, before the metal just sort of degrades. Um, so that provides a, a good contact. And unfortunately, that's going to cost $15 um, setup charge for a printed circuit board. So of course, if I have eight different ones, that's eight times $15. Well, instead of doing that, I'm just gonna have a generic board and I'm just gonna have eight of them. Um, and that way I only have to pay one uh, PCB setup charge um, and the boards themselves are fairly cheap. So, so that's the idea. Now we can take a look at the, uh, uh, the layout. Right, okay, this is the layout. Um, it's a four layer board. Um, so let me turn off the inner layers. Um, this is the big generic register multiplexer card. Um, and this is basically the layout. So um, the output of the multiplexer are these 32 signals all the way up at the top. And it's just a bus that sort of runs all the way along the board. Um, these over here are the pull downs. Um, these uh, in this uh, row are the uh, buffers for the multiplexer. Um, and then we have on the bottom row, this is the gal sitting over here. Um, and uh, the rest of these are uh, registers and or buffers. So we've got five registers and these are the X, Y, and Z buffers over here. And these are those two uh, three to eight decoders. And that's it. These are the four connectors uh, at the bottom, card edge connectors. Um, and... Uh, I can turn on the inner layers. These are power and ground. So the only problem with using a gal is that 
apparently they don't make 3.3 volt versions of this particular gal. Now, yes, I can use, you know, some other more modern CPLD, but I really, really, really wanted to use a gal. I mean, there's no reason why I should have to use a more complex device um, just to get 3.3 volts. But it turns out that if I do power this with five volts, uh, it turns out that um, the 16244 that I'm feeding with these signals is five volt tolerant. So that's good because the gal will output five volt signals and the buffer will be tolerant to those five volt signals. In addition, uh, because of, uh, because this is, um, uh, because this has a threshold that's compatible with 3.3 uh, volt logic levels, um, these input signals can be 3.3 volts and, and the gal will work just fine. So all I need is just, you know, an extra five volt um, power line uh, and that's this line down over here. And that's it. So, you know, hopefully it should work. Um, and what I did was I put this uh, thing over here, this, um, this blank rectangle of silk screen so that I can actually write in a uh, marker what this board, what this particular board is. Because remember that I'm going to get eight of the sa same printed circuit boards and then I'm going to populate them differently. So I need to keep track of which is which and I just write down what they are. Uh, let's take a look at the 3D rendering. Okay, so here's the uh, 3D rendering from KiCad. So I can, uh, I guess I can zoom in, I can move it around, I can rotate it. So uh, that's basically what it's gonna look like. Now, how big is this thing? Um, it's something like uh, 320 millimeters by something like 70 or 80 millimeters. So, you know, we're talking, um, so we're talking, um, you know, a third of a meter. Um, which is, I guess, not that much. So, um, you know, the, the size itself, I'm not too worried about, but what I am a little bit worried about are the fact that I have these uh, four uh, card edge connectors. So um, the thing is that I don't know what the insertion force for these connectors is, uh, and whatever it is, it's gonna have to be multiplied by four because I've got four connectors. Um, so what I've done is, um, so what I'm probably going to do is I'm just going to end up sending the PCB off to get manufactured. Um, and I don't really care if it works. Um, so I'm going to have the, um, this uh, sort of breakout board um, with four connectors on it. Uh, and then I'm going to have the boards themselves. So this way I can just put the connectors on and slot the board in. Um, and actually, um, the, the, the connectors come with little alignment pins, um, so hopefully um, I should just be able to put the connectors onto the board and solder them in, and that'll be that. The board will fit right on. Um, but what I can also do is I can take each connector and fit it onto the card first, and then put the, you know, put the entire assembly onto the breakout board, and then solder it, solder it in place. Um, that runs a bit of a risk because, you know, now I'm holding this uh, board perpendicular to this breakout board and, you know, it'll, it'll move around. So, uh, so I'm not really sure what I'm going to do. Um, each of these connectors, uh, if I buy it in bulk, is about $6 each. Um, so at, at worst, I will end up ruining four of those for, you know, like 25 bucks. Um, you know, and then there's the cost of the printed circuit boards themselves. So, you know, we're talking about, you know, 100 to $150, um, you know, just to, just to see this. So in any case, um, um, the possibility is that I just will not be able to insert this board by hand uh, into the connectors. Um, so there were some suggestions like, you know, maybe I can have little screws um, on the sides so that you know you put the board gently onto the connectors and then you screw it down on both sides and that will you know force the board into the connectors so that's that's a nice uh way of doing things um i know that in the old uh, s100 systems um there would be these two levers on the sides um where you would push it in by hand but in order to take it out uh it was very it was difficult, if not impossible, to do by hand. So they had these levers attached to the cards, uh, kind of like ears, um, and then you would lever them down 
um, which would be sitting against a rail. So as you would lever down one side, you would be lifting up the card uh, in the other, with the other sides. So um, that's another possibility. So it's not impossible. I just need to you know, try it and, and see what happens. So I guess that's really all I wanted to say. Um, again, sorry that this is a short video, but you know I just spent all my time you know working on this one board, um, and it's likely that I'm just going to be spending all my time uh, the coming week working on the breakout board. Um, so again, there there really won't be a whole lot to show, but you know hopefully uh, you know you got an idea of what I've been doing and what I've been uh, up to, uh, and that's really about it. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, and I will hopefully see you next week. Bye.